Welcome to Growing in His Word. God bless you guys. And listen, last week we talked about Ananias and Sapphira. And the, the radical part is, is they, brought, they lied to the Holy Spirit and kept back some of the proceeds, man. Last week we talked about that. We talked about how, how they died and how they, a certain part of the money they laid at, at Peter's feet. They sold the land. They robbed, they robbed God. Ananias and Sapphira wanted to have a reputation like that of Barnabas. But they did not have that same character that he had at the time when others were seeking to serve their fellow believers. Ananias and Sapphira were seeking to serve themselves. It was a self-serve ice cream shop where they wanted to look real nice and pretty, (laughs) but they didn't give God all of it. They only gave a portion. And part of that was pride. Part of that was self Look at me. Oh, wow. It's like they sold their house for 100000 and they only gave, you know, they paid off the note and they only gave, you know, they kept twenty grand. they gave 80000 Same thing, man. And God wanted it all. God wanted it all because it was his first church and his first church was very important. It was very successful. It never failed. Today, it's still relevant through generations and generations and how we are today. We cannot say that the church of Acts failed because it's, it was prosperous. Look at the people that were healed. Look at the things that were done. Look at the lame and the sick and the blind and, and the shadow of Peter when he passed. Wow, the Holy Spirit was powerful. And the Holy Spirit didn't want Ananias and Sapphira to lie. Because he wanted to set his mark. And the mark is this. Stop lying. Father, we come before you in your name, Jesus. We thank you for growing in his word. Lord, it's awesome to teach your word, Father, with you leading by your Holy Spirit, verse by verse, message by message. Father, you are so awesome and and great. Lord, we know that you're not a killer. You're a God of mercy, Father. And so as we study your word, Lord, we see the compromise and how you squashed it, Father, through those two deaths. At that one time, Father, Lord, you knew their hearts and you knew their wicked ways. You knew their prideful hearts. And Father, you took care of it. We thank you for the book of Acts in Jesus name. Amen. Welcome to Growing in His Word. I'm Joseph. God bless you guys, man. And last week we talked about Ananias and Sapphira. And we talked about the fact that they kept back part of the price of the land that they were going to give to the church. So that it would grow, and it did grow. And so we left off in verse uh, 9, verse 10, and even so forth. And so Ananias and Sapphira were lying to the Holy Spirit. And basically, what had happened was, the church was very successful. But the part was, at that time, people would bring the money to the church, to the first church there it was the only church. In fact, during the Pentecost, everybody came, the ones that were believers, and they stayed there because <laughs> there was nowhere else to go. So the church grew so big that they had to share all things and collect all things. And that method for that time was successful, but in a sense, it wasn't. And so we don't want to get too much we don't want to talk too much about how the finances of the of the of the successful book of Acts in that church was at the time because it it diverts us from what Christ has called us to do and that's to be about his business <laughs> not about his finances <laughs> but you know something God's in control no matter what and guess what he loves you guys and so we're going to continue and we're going to preach about the mercy and the radical message of how the church succeeded and how it is still successful, the book of Acts. And how we need to be more like the book of Acts. God bless you guys and welcome to Growing in His Word. Listen, last week we left off in Acts chapter 5. And so the early church didn't want to be contaminated. God didn't want to contaminate it, so he set his mark. And we could see that in the sin of Achan in Joshua chapter 7. We see that the temptation... You know, Achan, he was he he basically sinned. He took back part of the, the proceeds, the spoil that they took. And it says in verse 10, So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why do you lie thus on your face? 
Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of my accursed thing of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put in among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they have been they have, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore, he says, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourself tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel. See, so, number one, the, the sin was they transgressed the Lord's covenant, and number two, they took in some of the accursed thing, they stole, and they deceived. And they put the things among their own stuff, and they, and they, 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 they the temptation started it with Satan. That's why Peter said, why have you let Satan fill your heart and lie to you? They bit the, they bit the bait of sin, took it in their mind, and they ran with it. We can't run with the things of our own desires. Or we start to negotiate with ourselves, and God says not to do that. We can't be like a high. And Ananias and Sapphira, because even Israel was strong, and we see this where AI was taken because they got prideful and the self confidence, and that's where Joshua sent out the spies, and they said, "Yeah, we can handle it. Give us three thousand men, we'll take care of it." They sent the troops, and they were people were scattered out. They got taken up, hit up, banged up. Killed a few people, you know, and they came back and they were amazed. And so we can't be like that, man. We got to be holy like the Lord and try to be holy. But we know Jesus Christ will forgive us if we fall short. Listen, last week we left off in verse 16 where the church continued. Okay, the church continued and basically God was glorified. Listen to this. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were will, they were all with one accord. They were together in Solomon's porch. Verse 13, yet none of them, but yet none of the rest dared join them. But the people esteemed them highly, because they knew that the Holy Spirit was with them. And verse 14 says, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord, Multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out, out into the streets and laid them on the beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on us, might fall on some of them. Listen to this. Jesus was more powerful than the shadow. Can you believe that? Look at this. If Jesus is more powerful than the shadow, and they're trusting in his shadow, what does that tell you? Listen. A shadow went by. Like Exodus 33, where Moses was on the mountain, and God said, and, and Moses told God, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me have some of your glory. And God's like, <laughs> no, man, you're not touching this glory. Because, and, and it says that, you know, it would burn you up like the sun, God told Moses. But as he hid his face in the cliff in Exodus 33, God said, I'll let you see my shadow. Wow. Wow. And he walked down the mountain glowing, man, like, whoa. He was like, wow. And the people looked at Moses like, wow, what are you? Wow, man, you're glowing like the moon, bro. And all he did was see God's shadow. Here's Peter. Look, Peter's shadow. People are being healed by Peter's shadow. Unbelievable. And yet Jesus Christ is more powerful. And we can't even really physically see Jesus, even though he lives in us. Think about that. Think about that next time you have a problem. Because the book of Acts is not a lie. The church was very successful and is successful today in the lives of believers and even non-believers, by the way. Because we're going to see that. We're going to see the Pharisees come up against, against Peter. And we're going to see... How, the, how they're going to lock him up soon and get persecuted again and how, how radical it is to be persecuted and how we need to count it all joy. It, it, there's nothing new under the sun. Listen. It's amazing because P, 
Peter passing, the you know that the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. They they were they were they were wanting it. Verse sixteen says also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities of Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were healed. Wow, Jesus is the key, not man. We don't go to church revivals, uh, to the fake ones at least. And ask man to heal us. We ask Jesus Christ through man. The Holy Spirit through man. To heal us. And he will. If it's his will. But isn't it amazing. How Jesus is more powerful. Than a shadow. But yet these people. Still. Everybody. Not these. But all of us. Still doubt the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. We still can't believe. That God can heal us. From alcohol, or drug addiction, or prostitution, or lying, or stealing. Listen, you know, I really believe that the Holy Spirit would have healed Sepharis if she would if she would have said, "Peter, I stole from God. Here's the money right here. What do you want me to lay it?" I really believe God was merciful like that. But I, but it doesn't say that. But in the Bible, but I believe that. That God is merciful and God would have had that correction done at that time. Because God is merciful today. But we can't mess with the Holy Spirit. It's powerful. It's anointing. It knows all things. It searches our hearts. Our deepest root of hearts. And our, and our, and our, it knows our deepest intentions. That's why we got to be real with God and real with others and people. But most importantly, we got to be real with God and stop playing church. I really believe this. Listen. Jesus is the key. And that's what happened. And so everybody's tripped out. Man, the church is growing. You know, Christ is real and now he's moving spiritually. It's amazing. I mean, I, I, I don't want to just read this chapter. I mean, it's radical. I've walked into hospitals and laid hands on people and watched the Holy Spirit heal them. Some of them died, I mean, but they went to heaven. (laughs) They got healed completely. But God works when we can't see it. And we want things that we want, but God wants things that He wants. It's like your child. You don't want your kid you know, coming back from a party with all the candy that the kids gave them and they just want to eat candy all day and rot their teeth out. What you going to do? Hey, Dad, can I have another candy bar? Sure, go ahead. Mmm, yummy, it tastes so good. You get to the dentist and the guy's like, $5,863. What? Now here's my insurance. No, your insurance don't cover this. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) We love... Our children, so we stop them from destroying their bodies. Oh, pastor, you're getting off topic. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Listen, God loves us. He chastens the ones he loves. Ananias got it. They got it. Sepharis got it. Israel got it when they when they when they polluted God's you know the items were cursed they you know Achai stole some of the spoils and they took them out and stoned them to death the stones are to there they're still there in Israel today they're there but God deals with us each and every one of us individually he may not kill us for what we're doing but it's our sins that lead us to death listen God doesn't kill us we sins, we our sins, put Jesus on the cross, and our sins continue to grow and produce death in our life. But God can heal us. The shadow passed. Peter had the shadow, but Jesus has the real formula. It's like taking a Coca Cola and and putting all water in there, and you only got an inch of soda. You're not going to get the burp, man. <laughs> You're not going to get that big belch. You're not going to get that. Radical. No, I'm not advertising for Coca-Cola. <laughs> I don't want another email. <laughs> He's advertising for Coca-Cola. You don't get that burnt, man. That, uh, oh, that was great. Right through your nose and it burns. 
No, you don't get the real stuff. Jesus is the real stuff. Forget the shadow, go to Jesus. There's so many problems I hear every day. Pastor, 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 pastor. Ah! Dude, take it to Jesus, bro, and leave it. Take it to the cross and don't dig it back up anymore. Read the, read the book, Pilgrim's Progress. It's a burden. <laughs> we don't need to burden ourselves. But people are bringing, they're, they're sick people because they know the power of the Holy Spirit is real and we cannot touch the Holy Spirit. We cannot mess with the Holy Spirit. We cannot, we cannot speak against the Holy Spirit. Never. It's important. We do not test the Spirit. We love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in us. The Holy Spirit guides us. Peter was filled by the Holy Spirit. And he had the the anointing of the healing and everything else. Listen to this. Verse 17 says, Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which in the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, wrath, ah, you know, they were upset. And verse 18 says, and they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They wanted to stop what the Holy Spirit was doing. You can't do it. You're not going to stop the Holy Spirit. Watch. Verse 19 says, but at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. The messenger is an angel, okay? But listen to this. This is radical. All right? You know, the imprisonment of the apostles, man, it was this, this, was, this was common in the early church. <laughs> They're at it again. Put them in prison. <laughs> They're trying to stop the message. You can't, man. You can't stop Jesus. Look, you can't stop Jesus. You can't stop the power of Jesus. I'm so excited because I know it's real. I know Jesus is real. I know the Holy Spirit is real. And I don't care. I'm sold out. Listen. Listen to this. You ready? Because it's, it's, it's amazing. They're getting, here they come. They're, they're getting arrested again. You know, I've been out in the public sharing the gospel and the cops come up to me and say, you can't do that. Stand six feet behind the sprinkler. Dude, turn the sprinkler on. You're going to get wet now. I mean, man, let me preach the gospel. You can't do it. I've had cops come up to me and say, uh, section 19 of code 11, uh, this and that. And I go, yeah, well, verse 13 says, guess what? I'm, God's in control and you can't, you can't stop the Holy Spirit. Now, this isn't city property. I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to move on. Holy Spirit opens the door. The cop gets saved. He accepts Jesus and he says, yeah, you're right. Go on about your business. I've been there, man. Don't let the Holy Spirit... I mean, please let the Holy Spirit work in you. Don't let anyone else tell you differently. I mean, if the police tell you, you know, you got to obey police. I'm just saying when it comes to the gospel. Listen, the gospel is peaceful and loving. But they get arrested again. They get arrested again. And then the high priest rose up. And and listen to this, okay? So, and they laid hands on the apostles put them in the common prison, but at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out of the, out and said, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this. Okay? They went back. Listen, that's the key. Listen, note takers. Verse 20 says, go stand in the temple, speak to the people all the words of this life. Look, highlight that. You know, we get pastors, they just keep going and they keep booking on verse, keep going. No, listen, watch, observe. They went back. They just got their butts whipped, grabbed by the guards, thrown in the prison. Listen to this. You ready for this? And, the, and But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said... Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. They went back. They listened to God. They went back. They listened to God. Wow. Are we listening to the calling in God's in our life with God? This church is radical, man. I wish we were more like this. I wish pastors would get off the pulpit and get out there and start. Do your revival. I hear it all day in the the churches. Oh, we need another revival. 
oh, oh, oh. Get out there and take your church and hit the revivals. You're the church. Get out there. Get off of your cozy seats and start a revival. The Holy Spirit is with you. Let it move. Let the Holy Spirit groove in you. Don't you sit. You got 5,000 people in your pews. Oh, how cute. We're waiting on a revival. Yeah? Well, guess what? You are the revival. Get up and be about the Holy Spirit's business. These guys were locked up in jail and they went back. Are we cozy? Oh, that's, this is a condemnation message. No, it's not. It's facts. Jesus loves us. COVID-19 is, is, is the beginning, I believe, of the judgment of, of the United States. I believe it. It's the beginning. Diseases, it talks about it. Read the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And they're there. <laughs> Diseases. Earthquakes. Eventually the world's going to end. The Holy Spirit, God, Jesus Christ is going to come back. The rapture will take place. But what are we doing about Jesus? He said, go tell them about the words of this life. And when they had heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and they taught. But the high priest and those who him, those with him came and called the council. Here comes the Sanhedrin. They called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the sent to the prison to have them brought. Now watch this. Listen to this. They're going to get put on trial again. Persecution. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prisons. They returned and they reported saying, Indeed, if we find if we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Verse 24, Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men who you put in prison, <laughs> they're standing in the temple and they're teaching right now the people. <laughs> they mocked them. <laughs> I can't stop but laugh. You know, you try to stop the gospel and it's not going to work. You can't arrest the gospel. You can't, the, the Holy Spirit cannot be arrested. The Holy Spirit cannot be tamed. The Holy Spirit cannot be content. Uh, you can't mess with it. Jesus is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Holy Spirit. You cannot mess with the Holy Spirit. Here they are. Now they look stupid. These guys were let, they, they just, the doors were shut and boom, here, they're, they're coming to trial now. I mean, I don't know what to say. An angel let them out. You know, they're going to, think they're going to believe that? No, they're not going to believe it. Some of them won't, some of them will. You know, they found the prison shut securely and the guards were standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain, verse 24, of the temple, and the chief priests heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came, listen, and told them, saying, Look at the men whom you put in prison. They're standing in the temple teaching the people. <laughs> I got to sit down for this one. <laughs> you know, this goes to show that even though you're being persecuted at work, outside, God's in control, man. He's going to take care of you. God is not a liar. Is God a liar? Is G Let me ask you a question. Hey, believers. Is God a liar? No, he cannot lie. So what, do you, what makes you think he's not going to take care of us believers when we're doing the Holy Spirit's work? He's going to help us. Amen? He's there for us. He's going to meet our needs even to the end. There's no, need, there's no need to panic. There's no need to be sad. We need, need to know that when those doors are shut, God's going to open them in our lives. Listen. They kept going about God's business. Verse 26 says, Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in the name, in, the, in this name, you know, Jesus? 
And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Ooh, wow, it's contaminating. <laughs> and intend to bring the, this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, who you murdered by hanging on the tree, the cross. His God, him God has exalted to the right, his right hand, to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to the things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Listen, that's the key, believers. We need to obey the Holy Spirit in our life. God is calling us to obey. And we're not going to get past this chapter. We're going to stop on, on verse 33 on Gamaliel's, Gamaliel's advice. And Gamaliel was, a, was a, you know, a teacher of the law. And he was held in respect. Actually, he was Paul's, Paul the Apostle was, you know, looked up to him. And he taught him a lot. But listen, we got to obey the Holy Spirit. We need to obey what God has put in our lives. We cannot lie to the Holy Spirit. We cannot become unequally yoked. We must stand with Christ. Because when we do this, God will bless us. When we get out there and we put on Christ, the Holy Spirit will use us. These men were used. The sad part is, is today... This book is so real and nobody understands. A lot of churches don't get it. A lot of believers, they read it like it's a fairy tale. This book is real. Try it. I, here's the test for you today. Take your Bible, pray. Get, you know, Go out. If God asks the Lord to put on your heart, Lord, where do you want me to serve? How, Lord? Whether it's you know, encouraging others, Getting a Bible study going. Listen. Starting what God has called in your life and finishing it, no matter what, even until, we, until the death or the God, until the Lord comes back. Listen, I want you to go out there and I want you to say, Lord, test me, Lord. Listen, Father. Test me. Help me, Lord. Holy Spirit, come. Father, in your name, Jesus, help me be more like you. And Lord, send me somebody i guarantee you god's gonna send you somebody and test it and don't don't want don't try to get the glory give it to jesus and watch what happens and let it go man I, here's the test for you churches take 25 people hit the streets knock on doors oh well, we're not jehovah witnesses so what who cares they're more effective i'm sorry for the gospel but not as far as the, the, they're cultivistic, but they're they're more they're more effective at getting out there. No, let me repeat that. I don't want someone to email me again. Oh, uh, you said that Jehovah's Witnesses are yeah, it's okay. No, they're not okay. They're a cult, but they are effective when it comes to getting out there and sharing the gospel. In fact, it's it's sad they're more effective than ninety percent of Christians, and they're a cult. Even the cultivistic dudes on the bicycles. I mean, come on, man. Get a bicycle. Do something. But we got to do something for Jesus, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Time is short. Maybe God's calling you to get out there and be more be more productive like, like Peter. Man, if Peter was here right now, he would be, he would say, Jesus is real. I've seen him. Let's go. We got to be like Jesus, man. But we got to be, we have to have the boldness like Peter. And we got to have that in the back of our mind that the shadow of, of the Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. Father, we come before you, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this chapter, Father. It's, it's not a fasty or a quickie. <laughs> we got to take it slow. We got to know what you want in our lives, Father. Lord, we thank you for this chapter, Father. We ask, Lord, that you we, we just continue to be about your business, Father. Use the people that's listening to this podcast, Father. Lord, use them to touch the lives of others and not be complacent in their church or in their house. But, Lord, use them to get out there and be about your business. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. and Thank you for growing in this word. Growing in this word is powered by the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for listening. And here you will find us on all the podcasts, growinginhisword.com, 
You can find us on radio.com. God bless you guys. Pandora is, is there for you and everything else. And thank you for listening to growinginhisword.com. God bless you guys.